Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Thursday Theorist. Today we are talking about Skeleton Crew. Yeah. This is Stephen King's second collection of short fiction after Night Shift. Uh, I'm going to go through and tell you my favorite stories and then we're going to go through and talk about the stories that tie into the Dark Tower, to the King universe. I'm going to leave a couple open for you specifically for you to find, so please do that down there in the comments below. I don't really care if you cheat, but if you know the stuff off the top of your head, that'd be cool too. So first up, The Mist. Uh, the Mist, there's a element to the story, the creatures, the idea that things coming from another world. I like to think that the creatures in The Mist are the creatures that uh, Roland and everybody uh, comes across while they're on Blaine the Mono uh, going across the wastelands. And you look down, some of the creatures that they describe there seem to be the same type of creatures from the mist. Also, you have the, uh, what is it, not the show, I always forget these guys, uh, the, the shop. The shop is mentioned in this, which it's also mentioned in Firestarter, and it's also mentioned in the Dark Tower series. So all that stuff ties together right there. Next up, we have one that I saw uh, somebody made a very, very loose connect with, but I, I like it. It's fun, it's fan theories, all this stuff is fan theories, but here there be tigers. Somebody um, I saw online connected, here they be tigers with wind through the keyhole because of the tiger that's in wind through the keyhole. It might be the same tiger. But if you've actually read wind through the keyhole, you know that that tiger is not the thing from that story. But I thought it was a fun little fan theory. Uh, next up we have da, 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 da. a paranoid a chant comes into play uh, later on. Uh, but as far as that one, I mean, it's just... It's, it's a poem, and King's never been really good at poetry, I don't think. Uh, let's see here, Nona. Nona happens, a part of Nona happens in Castle Rock. So that, again, ties all that together, um, because I've attached Castle Rock to the Dark Tower universe already, and other ones, that's how I connected the body and evil things, all that. Um, oh, and by the way, it's Gwendy's button box that connects all of them the, the, it's the hard connect for all of Castle Rock, which is funny because that didn't that one didn't come till later. Uh, let's see here, and then we have let's see, uh, da, 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 I'm going through this. Uh, the Ballad of the Flexible Bullet is interesting because there's a lot of similarities between that story and the story N. Um, there's also there's also fan theories that say that the character in um, I already forgot the name of the story. In the Ballad of the Flexible Bullet. That's a hard one to remember. I always want to say Riding the Bullet, and I know that's not it. But the Ballad of the Flexible Bullet, the same character from that, I think his name Reginald, Reggie, something like that, um, wrote Paranoid A Chant. So that's interesting. But uh, actually, I did this backwards. That's, that's how all the Dark Tower stuff ties in. Now we're going to go into the stories that I like and what I liked about them. I did it backwards this time. Y'all fuss at me down there in the comment section. Um, okay, right off the bat, of course, The Mist is great. I love The Mist. Um, it's one of the, the best Stephen King adaptations also. The one with Thomas Jane. I couldn't get through the television series. I tried to watch it, and I couldn't get through the first episode. I was just like... And this is this is whatever, but I I do enjoy it. Um, I enjoy the way it starts with the uh, the storm and everything just building up, and when they go out into the mist, it's probably my favorite part. When they go to the I think it's what the store next the store next door, I thought that was really cool. The monkey is another favorite of mine uh, for the same reason that chattering teeth chattery teeth can't remember um, is a favorite of mine. It's just such a weird weird concept. And with the, the cosmic horror connotations that he puts in this with just the, the damn symbol monkey, it's, it, it's crazy and it's the kind of originality and the original content that I show up for. It's the reason why I like Joe Hill's collection so much. Stories like pop art. Um, <laughs> I love the weird stuff, especially if uh, it gets too big for the story kind of deal, and I think the monkey did that. Uh, the jaunt is, of course, another favorite of mine. Uh, the Jaunt is one of those rare short stories that actually terrifies me. Um, not because I believe in, you know, other worlds or other dimensions or anything like that. It's just one of those existential stories that really makes you think and gets you involved. And it is a scary concept to be lost 
for that long, however long those people are lost for when they go on the jaunt. It's a lot of fun. That story doesn't overstate. It's welcome. He gets down and dirty, straight to the point, and it's one of the few very succinct and tight Stephen King short stories. I love it. Um, let's see here. The Raft is another great one. Although, as far as experiences are concerned, I prefer to experience in what Creep Show 2, right? I think it's Creep Show 2. I prefer the, I guess, the film adaptation version of it more than I do the story. Just for experience wise, um, I like watching that more than I like reading the story. Y'all fussing me down there in the comments below. Uh, let's see here. Beach World is cool. Uh, every time Stephen King tries to do uh, sci-fi like that, I think he nails it um, because he doesn't do, he doesn't go too far into it. Doesn't go full on explanation. Uh, he just says, hey, look, here's a story involving this weird shit. Enjoy. And Beach World's one of those stories. It's fun. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not that it's one of his greatest stories ever. It's just a fun little story. Uh, Survivor Type is another one. Somebody brought this up in the comments uh, asking which one this was. And I think Cowboy beat... Who? I don't know. Somebody beat me to the answer, so thank you for beating me to the answer. But uh, Survivor Type is, of course, about a, a doctor who has to... Spoilers, I guess I could have said this at the beginning of the video, but um, he has to eat himself uh, because he's got str he's gotten stranded on a desert island. It's just a really cool concept. Him being a doctor and him having... Was it heroin or cocaine? It's something like that. I think it's heroin because it's a, there's a pain reliever. Um, I've never done cocaine, so if it's a pain reliever, let me know down there in the comments below. You know how we do. Um, anyways, but heroin's definitely, definitely a pain reliever. Um, but he uses that to chop off his foot, and he just starts eating himself. It's a great story. Very, very disturbing. Uh, and I th oh, The Reach, finally, at the end. And I always get this one confused with Castle Reach. Um, a little tall island and all that. In fact, in the, I think the Castle Rock... Uh, Castle Talk episodes that we did, I discussed how uh, the Reach happened, you know, on Little Tall Island. It doesn't happen on Little Tall, uh, Tall Island. My brain is like the Mandela Effect or whatever the hell it's called. Um, it happens on Goat Island, but it's funny because Stephen King, late, later on um, in his career, created uh, Little Tall Island and the, the passage between Little Tall Island and Castle Rock would freeze over and you'd be able to walk across, so I just always assumed that that was the case, you know, with The Reach, but it actually happens on Goat Island. But The Reach, I think, is one of those fantastic stories, and if you remember in the last Thursday Theorist I did, I talked about how uh, the man in the black hat, or sorry, the man in the black suit, um, how he won a, uh, an award for that story, and I said they were, I felt like they were giving him an award because they had missed out on opportunities earlier in his career and I think one of those cases is The Reach. Um, it is a personal favorite of Stephen King's. Um, I know that from watching interviews with him uh, even to this day he says it's still one of his favorite short stories and it's one of mine too. As far as this collection as a whole, hey I really went backwards with this one. I'm ending, I'm ending with what I thought of the whole collection. The, the collection as a whole is not one of my favorites. Um, there are some terrific terrific stories in here um, but there's really no middle ground so the stories are either really really good in my opinion or they're really really bad uh, I don't I don't know what it is but it just felt like some of these stories were way too forced and it felt like they were stories that were maybe written to uh, maybe make ends meet back in the day that could be wrong that could be wrong but that's what they felt like stories that you just crank out so that you can get a paycheck um, but that's how I feel about Skeleton Crew. How do you feel about Skeleton Crew? Did I mention any of your favorites? Did I not mention them? Uh, do you want to fuss at me? Because the ones I didn't mention, I don't like at all. Um, <laughs> leave your rage comments down there in the comments below. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Thursday Theorist Review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!